Hello everybody, welcome to our service today. It's a great pleasure to be with you and as we know it's the first Sunday of November and so that means we're back looking at the cross, what the death of Jesus means and what it does for the Christian. And it's the last point of what it does for the Christian today. We are looking at glorification. We're looking at how a when the Lord Jesus comes back, how a Christian will be glorified, as Jesus is now glorified. And it's a really exciting topic, it's a big topic, lots to get into. And next month, we're going to be rounding it all off with union with Christ. So it's just drawing a circle around everything we've looked at and saying it's all because we're united with Christ. What the death of Jesus means, means what it means because we're united with Christ. How we were chosen before the foundation of the world is because we were united with Christ. How we were called to become Christians because we were united with Christ. How we were born again, how we were given repentance and faith. How we were justified, adopted, sanctified, preserved and glorified is all because of union with Christ. So that's going to be really exciting. Um, I'm daunted because it's such a big topic and it's so beautiful. No preacher can do it justice, but we're going to look at it. So these are the last two months and I hope you're blessed and I hope it makes us live like we have an eternal hope, it makes us think like we have an eternal hope and makes us lift our eyes to our eternal hope, who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Just a, one or two little notices. Uh, on Wednesday night, we have a life group. Um, Barry's leading it. We're looking at the Apostles' Creed, and we're actually looking at where Jesus rises again and has ascended and is coming back. So do come along. Great, Barry's doing a wonderful job as he always does. And Eric picks some songs, and that they're great what he's doing. Um, I've, I've learned a few new ones, been introduced to some good bands that sing really scriptural worship songs. So it's great. Do come along if you're free. Um, if you are struggling to pray, Simone put some prayer points on the SBC on track. And over the past couple of weeks, Simone and I have been using them in family worship. We've set aside not a great length of time, about 15 minutes, to just pray through the prayer points. Um, and it's wonderful because it's there's a scripture reading, a prayer, and a song. That's what family worship should be like. Um, we should read, pray, and sing. Like we should do in, in public worship at church. And in our own private worship, our quiet time as it's called. Um, but yeah, use those prayer points. If you're struggling to pray, um, or if you're, you think you're not very good at praying, if you think you're not very good at praying, join the club. Um, but they're really, really good. So have a look at them. And the third point, on the 15th of November at 4pm at Christchurch Pennington SVC, we'll be having a service. At 15th of November, 4pm. At Christchurch Pennington, SVC will be having a service. So with that said, we're going to begin. And I'm going to read from Psalm 105, verses 1 to 11. Psalm 105, verses 1 to 11. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Tell of all his wondrous works, glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength, seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles and the judgments he uttered. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. 
the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute, to Israel to, as an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. That's God's promise to Abraham, and we know in Galatians 3 that that was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. He is the king, he is the one who is the true seed of Abraham, who will receive Canaan and all the nations of the world as an inheritance. And as Paul rounds off that chapter, he says, if you are in Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So let's give thanks to the Lord, let's call upon his name, and let's make known his deeds among the people. Let's worship God. <laughs>